Good morning, everyone. And good morning to those of you who are joining us online. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be with you. And also, please turn and greet one another. Our service today begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's holy word. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the squares, she raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you, because I have called and you refused, have stretched out my hand and no one heeded, and because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you. When panic strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof, therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way and be sated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure, and will live at ease without dread of disaster. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is proper 19. I'm sorry, Psalm 19. Uh, it can be found on page 606 in your Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin. We'll read this in unison. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. 
The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. A reading from the book of James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with great, greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth comes blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brother and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mark, glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went on with his disciples in the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And Jesus sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and, and began to rebuke him, turning and looking back at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with the disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <coughs> Please be seated. <coughs> As you hear, my allergies are still having fun with me. <coughs> Jesus asks today, he asks us today, what he asked the disciples so long ago. Who do we say that he is? I suspect that like Peter, we would all quickly say, he is the Christ, the Messiah, the one who came among us to show us the right way back in the right relationship with God, and the one through whom, home, through whom we are offered eternal life. And like Peter, we would be right. But the next question, it's a harder one. If we call Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, then whose terms guide our lives? Ours or his? Like Peter, we wrestle with the implications of calling, professing Jesus as the Christ. Not because we don't believe what we are saying, but because each of us has their own idea of how he, the Messiah, would do what he came to do and how far we are willing to go to do what still needs being done today. You see, most Christians would gladly say they, they are grateful for the cross because on it Jesus was hung to show us the depth of God's love for us and the power of God to overcome that which comes between us. It is easy to call Jesus Lord, Christ, when we see what he has done on our behalf, what he gave of himself for us. 
and the hope that he still offers through his resurrection. Through his death and resurrection, we are told that we have been freed from the power of sin and death. And that as a result, the relationships that were once broken are now renewed. And that all is well between us and God. Thereby opening a door through which we can walk where we will live in peace with one another. Not just in this life, but in the life to come. Now if that is what you believe, let me hear a hearty amen. Amen. Not bad. For a tradition that doesn't normally add amens or hallelujahs to a sermon. But if we are to profess Jesus as the Christ, we need to do it boldly. Amen. There we go. That's much better. I love it. Thank you very much. But just like Peter, it doesn't end with our, profes- our process- profession, our saying <laughs> what we believe. There's always more. If we are to call Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, then we, like Peter, must let go of our expectations. Expectations that arise out of our desire to live life in the way that we want to. Even when that way does not fully fall in line with the teachings of Jesus throughout his earthly ministry. When Jesus rebukes Peter for his short-sightedness and self-centeredness, he is rebuking us as well. Because like Peter, we want what we want. We know how things are supposed to be. But do we really? Do we? Not if we're honest with ourselves. Take, for instance, our return this week to two Sunday services. Some in our community have been like Peter, standing firm in what they believe that we cannot continue with only one service on Sunday. We must have two. And like so many others, they want what they want. They want what they had before the pandemic, and they will do what is necessary to make sure that any changes forced upon us by the pandemic do not become the new normal. My brothers and sisters, as Jesus tells Peter, nothing we do is going to stop what is inevitable. Like Peter, we must let go of those expectations that, and desires that run contrary to the path that has put, been, been put before us. Now, we're not walking a new path because of the pandemic. We're still walking the same path that we have always walked. What's new is how we see those obstacles that we encounter along the way. The pandemic has accentuated and accelerated obstacles we as a parish have had to deal with for more than 25 years. And the wider church, much longer. First, for us, was the downsizing of Offutt Air Force Base. The one constant source we had of people in search of a worshiping community. And the second... The building of St. Martha's in the next city over. A city that is still rapidly expanding and growing. As the number of those in search of a worshiping community in Bellevue dwindled over the years, we did very little to change our visibility in the community. Trusting instead in in what we had always had done before. Believing in our hearts that if it worked before, it will work again in the future. After a while, we did realize something needed to be done. And as I said, we've made some little changes. But we have resisted and rejected many more. 
and in our determination to hold on to what we had and to be who we believe we were, we have actually turned away many who were seeking, many who were searching, further isolating ourselves from the very community we were called to serve. I know what I'm saying is hard to hear. Just as it was for Peter when Jesus said to him that nothing he does can prevent what is to happen from happening. And that Peter must trust in God and not his own sense of what should be. Like Peter, we need to hear that truth. When our focus is more about what we want than what we are called to do, the Spirit who leads us into all truth nudges us gently at first to help us refocus our attention on the truth we are supposed to be holding on to. But when we push back, when we tell the Spirit, <clears throat> we know better, the Spirit gets a little more direct with us. While we may not get the public rebuke of Peter, we are then shown what lies ahead if we do not change our focus. What is the Spirit showing us? From what I have been reading in the various blogs I follow, and from talking with other area clergy, I think the Spirit is using the pandemic's effect on parish communities across the wider church to show us what James is warning in his, the early church in his letter. When our faith becomes something we profess but do not live, we no longer bear witness to the good news of Jesus Christ. And instead of showing people the way to right relationship with God and one another, we, like the wider church, become a reflection of the world around us. No, offer, no longer offering anything different and therefore no longer relevant to anyone other than those who remain. Over time, the light the church once held so high begins to sink lower and lower as fewer and fewer people are there to hold and lift it up. This is not easy to hear, I know. But the good news is not all is doom and gloom. Our church along with the wider church, can still thrive if we, like Peter, can trust in God more than we do ourselves. Notice after his rebuke, Peter doesn't throw up his arms in disgust and walk away, go find another church teacher that he can follow. Nor does he cower in the corner ashamed of being called out in public. In his own way, he says, all right, Lord, let's get to work. Will Peter mess up again? Oh, yeah, we know it, big time. But with God's help, he will lift up and try again. And in doing so, he will offer people hope. Hope found and, and revealed through the love of God. Love that was revealed to us in and through Jesus Christ. Love that is for all to know and embrace. We, like Peter, have seen the glory of God. And like Peter, we are called to share what has been revealed with those around us. To do so, like Peter, we must be willing to go where the Lord leads us and do what the Lord asks of us. Time and again, Jesus says, living the life of faith will be hard, 
But it will be made easier if we trust in God to help us, to guide us along the pathway we are intended to walk. We, like the wider church and and Peter, stand at a crossroads. If we say Jesus is the Christ, which way do we go? Do we go down that path that is comfortable, leading to nowhere? Or do we go down that path of self-determination? Or do we? Trust and follow the Spirit down a path that asks more of us than we feel we can give. One that, with God's help, changes lives. Ours and those we encounter along the way. The choice is ours. Amen. Continuing on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. God, the Son of God. Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The Prayers of the People is Form 4. You can find this on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and the world. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, pray for the Anglican Church of Tanzania. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, Pray for Balancing the Scales of Justice Task Force, St. Luke's, Plattsmouth, Reverend Mavis Hall, Deacon Ellen Olson. In the Dominican Republic, pray for the Incarnation Church, St. Martha Church. In the parish cycle of prayer, pray for all grandparents. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our President, Joe Biden, our Governor, Pete Ricketts, and the elected officials of the communities in which we live, for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Scott, our bishop, 
and Tom, our priest, guide them and the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours. We remember today those who serve our country at home and abroad, especially those who are deployed. Sarah F. and Darren, are there others? Those who travel, Frank and Peggy Z, are there others? Those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Sylvia M, Jillian P, Eric H, David R, Marie M, are there others? Those celebrating anniversaries this week, Richard and Bonnie E, are there others? Lord, grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, we lift up those in our congregation and those we know who are ill, especially Marilyn B., Vicki, Matt and Melissa, Sydney, Dave S., Mark T., Kevin, Katie, and Charles. Are there others? We also pray for those with special concerns, especially the Maines family, Aaron H., the Wilkins family, Celine W., the Page family. Are there others? Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in your, their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, uh, we commend to your mercy all who have died, especially those who lost their lives 20 years ago on 9-11, and all those since who have given themselves that we might know peace. Are there others? That your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways 
to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, whose will it is to hold both heaven and earth in the peace of your kingdom, give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer C, found on page 369 in the Book of Common Prayer. <coughs> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. 
glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. <laughs> So, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. <laughs> Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
Continuing on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. <laughs> And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, in the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> so if you look in our bulletin, once again, it is full of announcements. Uh, please take it home and read through them all. I won't, I won't cover all of them today, but I am going to cover some of the big ones. Um, you may have smelt it, may not, but we have a pancake breakfast downstairs, so please stick around for a little bit, have some breakfast. Um, any proceeds, any donations that you do make are all going to serve Magdalen House Omaha. Today's horseback ride, the weather is cooperating. It's been years since we've had a dry week to do this, so um, we, <coughs> excuse me, those who need a ride or who wish to caravan, be here at the church by 2 o'clock. We will leave at 2 o'clock. If you are going to meet us at the ranch, Shady Ranch, Shady Lane Ranch, be there by about quarter to 3. Our first ride starts at 3 o'clock, and they like to start pretty darn much on time. Um, if after this service you would confirm with me if you're going, um, I just want to make sure I've got to call them and tell them how many we have, whether we need one section or two. Um, also this week, uh, is the youth group uh, at Papio Fun Park over there on Lincoln and Papillion. We will meet there at 6.30. Uh, do not come to the church Wednesday night. Go straight to Papio Fun Park. Uh, please eat something before you come because they don't usually have a whole lot of healthy food for anybody to chew on. Um, it, it is free to those members in the parish that are 10 to 18 and $10 for any family and friends who wish to participate in the laser tag, miniature golf, um, or bouncy castles that are there. Um, we do mention that all youth who come and want to play the video games, please bring your own quarters. Thank you. Uh, we have a midweek Bible study starting this Wednesday at 1030 in the morning. And next Saturday, we will not have our 5 p.m. service. It's, I'm unavailable that night. And we are, I'm going to be doing a wedding of Darian Mateo and Alexis Blinston, two longtime uh, Journeys members who are now um, a couple and getting married. So I won't be here Saturday night. Valas, I know people have signed up for. We've got a pantry coming. Um, if you haven't checked the phone book yet downstairs, uh, please double check and make sure your information is correct. If it is, just initial. If it's not, give us, a, give us the correct information and let us know. And one announcement that's not in here is tickets go on sale today for Oktoberfest. Uh, please get your tickets early because we're going to have limited seating this time. Uh, the ticket cost is still $10. That includes your dinner, bingo, some trivia, and prizes. So it's a good, and samplings of either alcoholic or non alcoholic of your choice. All right, let's see. Birthdays and anniversaries. Um, this isn't, it is a typo in there. I was going to ask, is that Aaron or Eric? <laughs> so we do have one birthday, and um, Richard and Bonnie, I know, are usually watching us online. So would you join me in the birthday prayer, please? Oh, God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on these, your servants, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. And Lori, how many years have your parents been married? Do you know? 55. 55. Woohoo! Please join me in the anniversary prayer. O oh, gracious and ever living God, look mercifully on these who have been joined together. Grant them your blessing and assist them with your grace, that with fidelity and steadfast love they may honor and keep their promises and vows. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs>